One of the poems I'm going to do is called Nanabusu. When I came to this part of the world, and practically every year, there is hurricane season. In fact, I witnessed Hurricane Andrew. I um, was inspired to write a hurricane poem. It was titled Nana Kusum. Nana is, of course, um, a term, an honor, honorary greeting, you know, title, Nana. So we call God in a can Nana. The hurricanes, after Hurricane Andrew, I found myself thinking so much of hurricanes and at first being so afraid of them. Then my mood towards them changed because I had a new perspective on them. So this poem is Nana. We call the ocean Nanabusum, the Atlantic Ocean, the god of and goddess of the ocean. Nanabusum, speaking to you know us. I am Nanabusum, genesis of the waters ever-flowing spirit of Abyssinia. I am omnipotent inhabitant of the waters of the Guinea coast. I am Nanabusungu of old, creation flowing through eternity, here, there, everywhere, endlessly beginning but never ending. I am Nanabusu, spirit connecting worlds, differentiating continents. I am deceptively calm, soothing, expansively generous. My waves break endlessly on countless shores. I am Nanabusu, eternal farm. My maternity knows no bounds. Tuesday is my day. The world celebrates my fecundity. My children leave me alone. On Tuesdays, I refurbish the waters with fish. So the rest of the week, my children can catch fish or merely frolic immersed in my maternal warmth. But I also thunder and rave when I am right morning. Every year I pack mighty waves and winds to avenge my children stolen from Abyssinia. From the Guinea coast, I hurl hurricanes against marauders in the Americas. Every year, I moan and I roll, mourning my children who remain unburied in watery graves, marking the middle passage. Every year, my grief erupts in tempest, wreaking havoc on the Americas, for my maternity knows no bounds. I am Nanabusum, genesis of the waters. I am Nanabusum.
Nanamusu, eternal fount, eternally mourning stolen children. And hopefully that will lift you up after downing your spirits. Some of you may be familiar with the living color, right? Yeah. And Jamie, Jamie Fox. Yes. He inspired me to write this poem, his character. And it is titled, You Rock My World. You rock my world, man of primeval passions. Your rousing touch ignites every atom in my hair ridden body. Miracle maker, injecting life blood into me, I cherish your invitations to the threshing floor of healing. For always, I demand head of all tension, resonant in rhythms that are vibrantly weaved. Your manhood draws out my womanhood. Your touch lifts me high above life's tragedy. My maker must have given you the key to my sanctuary. For you have unlocked the door to the secret of my life. Miracle worker, your touch unleashes that prim primal joy of knowing how well loved I am. Soul songs. Songs are in our souls. Songs gush from women's hopes as their spirits stay. Songs are in our souls. Songs erupt from birthing wounds, engendering blood. Songs are in our souls. So, in these menacing times, let soulful songs be By writing it's a big part of my healing process and a part of my becoming whole over and over again. Um, I wrote this poem on New Year's Day 2021 and it's called Laden and it's a haiku. Five sandhill cranes flew over my head this morning calling me upward. They said, look here, look. Lift your eyes heavenward and stop your sad story. But this is such a sad, sad story, isn't it? To be here, all flesh, all burdened with life, heavy with loss and sorrow, unrealized dreams. The cranes call again, laughing clearly and with love, shaking their damn heads. How do you forget over and over again what you always knew? The tangerine tree in my yard is heavy, stooped. It is bowed and bent. From here I can see it only bears the weight of full, sweet, ripened fruit. And funny, but I never heard it lament or moan or complain that the damn fruit wouldn't ripen faster, that the wheat was too much to bear. <laughs> and even now, it hangs in perfect balance, full of unclaimed jewels, neither crying out for more recognition nor asking why it's there. It will offer you its fruit, and you will take it or you won't. So what? The taste is no less sweet because you passed on by. Seasons come again. My life is full of unclaimed jewels. I have been singing a sad song 
about the burden of all this beauty I get to carry with me. I have been singing. It sounded like something else. The cranes keep laughing. I still have joy. It's in memory of my great-grandmother, born 1826 in Parchman, Mississippi, on the Parchman farm, and she was enslaved. 1839, age 13, she was kidnapped from her parents, forced walk to Jackson, Mississippi, where she was auctioned off by James M. Perry, I'm sorry, by James M. Parchman, and walked from Mississippi to Florida. She's my hero. Because of her, I am. Mm -hmm. And this is the story I have put into poem that she shared with her children and grandchildren. And my mother shared it with me. I still have joy. Mm -hmm. For great grandma Julianne echoed, I still have joy. For all the things that I have been through, I still have joy. For all the heartaches and heartbreaks, I still have joy. For the unauthorized crimes on my sunshine, I still have joy. I was whipped, was not equipped. I was intimately robbed, could only saw. I was spat on, just sat down. I was shot at, just dodged it. I was starved, given Paul lard. Never enough food to do any good. Mistreatment the American way. A statement that she would repeatedly say, stole me from my parents, an innocent child, accused me, abused me, and misused me. In spite of it all, I remain near, oh my God, to thee. How great thou art. Precious Lord, take my hand. Blessed assures. And Father, my hand, <coughs> I stretch to thee. And I still have joy. I'm originally from Utah. I've been in Florida for nine months. And it was a poem that brought me to Florida. It was a poem written about Rosewood that brought me here. So sometimes our words, our verses, our creations have a life of their own that we, we can't even begin to imagine. Two years ago, I'm sitting in my room in my home comfortably reading about Cedar Key because I'm going to plan a trip. And one thing led to another. John, John Muir's visit to Cedar Key. And then all of a sudden, I'm reading about the Rosewood Massacre. Yeah. And then, within a few hours, I penned a poem that changed my life. <coughs> Remembering Rosewood, all that remains are the keepers of the story in hallowed ground just beyond the glory. Innocence. <coughs> suffered ravages of hate. Their voices cry out, remember our fate. A culture of silence, fear, and shame. Legacy of Hope now calls out their names. Remember Rosewood, the peaceful place. Remember the people of dignity and grace. Mankind's darkness, a distant memory. To perish innocence, a sacred reverie. Sentiments of sadness, 
and grief live still. Keepers of the promise must fulfill. <coughs> Trees whisper on winds of sorrow, pleading for change on new tomorrows. Crimson wood holds their story. Roots run deep in earthly glory. Nigh a century gone with time, echoes still the church bells chime. And it's my life in decades, in six word memoirs, my gift to you. So each line is six, six words. The 1950s, my dad missed my earth entry. I learned to walk in Liberia. My mom loved me very much. I first saw blood in Ethiopia. My sister always wanted me gone. Our swing hung from eucalyptus trees. My brother got lost in the chaos. The Queen Elizabeth brought us home. Kindergarten frightened me on the first day. I became familiar with pink people. I missed being with brown people. My sister blew snot on me. That's the 50s. 1960s. The rheumatic fever has gone away. My asthma has pretty well subsided. Our home life is rocky, disconnected. I'd cry alone in my bed. Heartbreak, let me out of here. Depression, confusion, I felt cold, blue. I remember when Kennedy was shot. Eighth grade music class was interrupted. Vietnam War and racism were appalling. Refusing to salute the American flag. These words are not my words. The ACLU finally won my case, so I graduated just in time. The Poor People's Campaign in Washington, D.C. Woodstock 69, my purple VW bug. Mescaline, marijuana, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Found out free love isn't free. <laughs> That's it. I'm sorry, it's going to take a little while here, but I, I couldn't cut anything. 1970s, travels in Mexico for language study. A flight home, baby in utero. Mom sheltered us for a while. Met the man of my dreams? A Vietnam veteran, traumatized combat marine. Life by day was babies, sweet. Life by night, a different story. No phone, no car, no friends. Alone with babes in the woods. Cicadas chirping, diapers in the wind. Deeper and deeper, my private despair. Need to stay present for babies. Trying so hard, but finally burst. Went home in my bedroom slippers. Oldest daughter with me in flight. Sister picked me up in Boston. I told her, we're in Montreal. Placed in a state mental hospital, my leaking breasts were crying out. Forced in injections, restraint, seclusion, isolation, terror. This is not where I belong. Running in the streets high and low. Then in 79, off to Gainesville. 1980s, starting life anew with two girls. Then, thank God, with three girls. Cleaning houses for the rich people. Reuniting with Jerry Pfeiffer, Prem Dinesh. Ups and downs, ins and outs. Living in the Bulware Springs house. 1989, my friend dies with AIDS. Pfeiffer Memorial benefits for my prize. First grandchild was born in 89. What a joy to carry on. 1990s, celebration of unity on MLK Day. Earth Day festivals, Gainesville's downtown plaza, winter solstice healing arts festivals happened. Emerging 
from my sorrow with community, preparing the way to eventual wellness. I meet my beautiful life partner. He lives life gentle and clear. How fortunate that he loves me. Five more grandchildren come into being. 2000s, Bonnie's Garden licensed home day. Five years of work, loving kindness. Thomas Center, lovely wedding, 2004. Honeymoon summer tour of France and Italy. Adjusting to this life without degradation. Not pain free, but quite beautiful. Naomi overdose, recovery, addiction, and death. That's my daughter. Grief was always her downfall. Floundering to deal with extreme emotions. Worry about, worry about the other family members. Then mom's Alzheimer's takes her away. Seven deaths in five years, wow. Death doula training after mom dies. The 2020s, COVID, devastation, racism, pain, Trump, death. How on earth do we continue? My new specialty is grief recovery. I found my place at last. Fear, joy, regret, love, sorrow, surrender, honesty, mystery, storytelling can work wonders. Transforming grief is an evolutionary process. Take a moment to uh, of silence to uh, honor and uh, those, uh, those two very special uh, people who are not here with us, uh, who would normally, ordinarily be here if they were here in this realm. And that's uh, Brother James Thompson and my dearest sister, Dr. Patricia Hill. Oh. Nun. Yeah. So, so thank you all for, for staying and being with us and you have been Start good afternoon and pop 
be about what you're doing for improvement, for a movement. What you proving? I seen you. Hem and haw like it ain't time to take a stand. And with the next man, you want to clasp hands and front on solidarity. All the while avoiding clarity, you looking like a disparity. And golly, you're just disappointing me. Yeah, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, you're Afrocentric for display. Like when it's safe to be carried away in the illusion of purpose, unrelenting dedication, acting like you're carrying forth an independent black nation, but only offering me that same old indentured hesitation. Don't look to the beat for approval, because all you'll see is me erasing you from that list of those for which I'll push my fist up. Don't call me vicious, because I'm, I'm really more like desperate. Mostly because our obligation should be apparent, but nah, nah, nah. It's like, it's like, it's like introspection got neglected in a haste to save face when you need to take place and stand on the ideals that you misconstrue because it served your mood. Okay, okay, I probably sound rude. But look past my attitude. I'm coming after you from the bottom of my heart. You need to get up. I love you, but your lazy ass is a hindrance. Your complacency is a no-no. I can't ask you about Mumia because that is rather you was a no-show. Who gon' grow through your cosmetic, comedic sense of struggle? It's these talking-ass people got me pen up in a bubble where I'm contemplating liberating somebody else's race, at least to the black mass ready to keep the pace. Thank you. So like the greatest honor of my local poetic life is when the E Stanley, Mrs. Stanley is what I call her, he got my number from a girlfriend and said, have her to call me. I'm like, well, what do you want to talk to me about? <laughs> he wants me to write a poem for us to do a poem together. So we started it. We started it. And it's called Before I Go. And you the one that said only one poem allowed tonight, and we ain't finished it yet. So y'all be the witness, God willing, on the 11th anniversary, you're gonna see an amazing collaborative performance. I just wanna take this opportunity to thank you all for sharing the 10th anniversary of Art Speaks. Congratulations, Stan. I remember him sitting in the, in the house with a, a box of crayons, doodly Art Speaks, and here we are today. Thank you so much, and I'm very proud of you. I also want to do some housekeeping to thank the City of Gainesville Department of Cultural Affairs for their generous support of this event for the past 10 years, and also the State of Florida Division of Cultural Affairs for the generous financial support to keeping this program and many programs throughout the city. Um, Art Speaks is a 501c3 organization. We also have Art Speaks Courageous Young Voices, Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, poets, for 